Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited because I finally filmed a full tour of the Al-Aqsa compound or the compound of the Haram al-Sharif. So it's gonna be a long video. As you can see, it's over 30 minutes. So I just wanna say a few things before you start watching. The first thing I wanna say is that I filmed this with my iPhone because I film everything with my iPhone since I don't have a camera yet. Inshallah, I will get one. But until that time comes, then you're gonna be getting iPhone quality camera. Um, so the quality is not the best. And I'm also not the best at filming. I was tired, so it's gonna be some shaky moments, not the best lighting, not the best quality, but I hope you still like it. The second thing I wanna say is that I wasn't able to get everything, everything on the video. Many people falsely believe that the Haram al-Sharif or the Al-Aqsa compound is only comprised of two buildings and that is the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Qibli Mosque, but that is far from the truth. In fact, there are so many structures on the Dome of the Rock or on the Al-Aqsa compound that this is why I couldn't film every single one of them. So in short, there are eight prayer halls, including the Al-Qibli Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, 10 open gates, five closed gates, 19 schools, 15 domes, four minarets, 31 terraces, 15 solitude places, six corners, it's like buildings, you'll see later, three hallways, three mihrabs, 18 springs or water sources, eight arches, two pulpits, two sundials, 13 wells. So that's a lot of structure. As much as I could, and some of these places I didn't even know exist, and when I was doing the research into what every structure is, I discovered some new places. So inshallah, next time I go, I will take videos of them. But I, anyways, please bear with me. Um, I also, one last thing I wanted to say is I'm gonna leave all the links to um, the information that I'm gonna be talking about in the links in the bio. So you can actually look at those and they have nice pictures of the outside and the inside of buildings. And I couldn't get the inside of all buildings because most of them were closed, unfortunately. This is right when you walk in through this gate, what you see. So I'm already gonna go up there to Aqsa in a while. So now we're gonna go actually down here so I can show you all the trees and then later I'll show you all of this part so it's actually super peaceful here there's not much noise I mean I can still hear people from afar but for the most part it's pretty quiet and this is Zuhid and my brother-in-law Muhammad so actually this is I'm gonna film this thing, um, this video in two days. So this is actually the second day of me filming. Um, so you're gonna see that I'm wearing different outfits. Also, this is water, don't worry, it's not dirty. Um, but yeah, there's some sort of golf cart behind me. But yeah, I'm gonna be um, filming this in two different days because it's quite big. So uh, it's tiring to like <laughs> visit the whole compound in one day. Right now we are approaching the Dome of the Lovers of the Prophet, which is a square building situated towards the northern side of the Masjid al-Aqsa. It was a place where the Sufi sheikhs would gather for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This dome structure was built by the Ottoman Sultan Mahmud II in 1808 CE. It is close to the Bab al atim the Gate of Darkness. The building is based on four stone pillars built over a platform that is half a meter high than the rest of the Al-Aqsa grounds. It was also the last Ottoman commemorative building to be erected in the Haram area by an Ottoman Sultan after Sultan Suleiman's grand project of the 16th century. And just inside of it, you can find the Mihrab of the Lovers of the Prophet's Dome. <laughs> Fiha 
And right behind it, you can find a terrace or a mastaba. There are actually quite a few mastabas on the entire compound, but this one specifically is called the Suleiman Spring Terrace. It was built during the Al Qanuni Ottoman era in 1536 AD and named after Suleiman Al Qanuni. <laughs> And as I mentioned, the Dome of the Prophets is right next to the Gate of Darkness, or Bab al-Hatim. It is one of the gates of the Temple Mount. It is located on the north side, and it is one of the three gates that allow entry from the north side of the Haram al-Sharif complex. Most likely built during the Umayyad period, and it was refurbished in the Ayyubid period during the reign of King Isa in the 610 Hijra. So right over there is another gate you can exit and enter from and right over there where there's the green gates it's the men's bathroom right here is the men's bathroom and this is a place where you can just wash your hands and then down here there's the women's bathroom so where you see these things right here is where the women do will do and i'm actually not going to film inside of it because it's private so yeah that's it this next building right here is Al Ghadriya School. It was built in 1433 by Prince Nasser al Din Muhammad bin Dilkadir. Over time, the roof of the school fell and the Islamic Waqf Department realized that it needed to be renovated, but the occupation authorities prevented them from finishing the renovation process, so it is still without a roof, as you can see. This school served the Turkish living in Jerusalem and was funded by Khan Ghadriya in the market of Qatanin. So now we're continuing our walk here. It's very easy to get lost here. This is why if you come here for the first time, I suggest you come with somebody who knows where they're going because you will probably get lost here. Um, like I got lost here before many times, but I finally understand where like most of everything is. So at this point, I'm not scared of getting lost. Look at this. I don't know what all of these things are. I can come closer. It's just some <laughs> rocks. I don't know why. I think they're like renovating something here maybe because that's what it kind of looks like. There's always cats here, chilling out. And there's some more places here where people can just hang out and sit. And during Ramadan, a lot of people actually um, like sit down here and have a picnic or eat their iftar. So we're gonna go down here. Once again, up here is where is the Dome of the Rock, but I'm gonna show you that later. So first we're gonna go through here. So this is the Dome of the Rock and we're going to go to Al Qibli Mosque which is right down here. Next up is Al Ghazali Corner. As you can tell from the name, this structure is where the famous Islamic scholar Imam Al Ghazali stayed in Jerusalem. In a room underneath the dome is where he wrote his major work, Ihya Al Mubin. This whole structure is also known as Bab al Rahma, meaning the Gate of Mercy. It is on the other side of the Golden Gate and it was closed for many years but has recently reopened and renovated. It is open to the public so you can go inside to read Quran, pray, or read one of the many books that they offer inside from great scholars. Now we finally made it to the famous Masjid al Qibli. As you might already know, it's called the Masjid al-Qibli because it was the first Qibla or the first direction of prayer in Islam before it was Mecca. In fact, the front of the Masjid is aligned directly towards the Kaaba in Mecca. When Umar entered the Al-Aqsa Sanctuary in 638 CE, he was shocked to find it covered with rubbish as the Romans had been using the area as a rubbish tip. The Caliph knelt down immediately and with his own hands began to clear the area. When the Muslims saw what he was doing, they followed suit and soon the whole area was cleansed. They then walked further to the niche of the Dawood and offered two rakah prayers, in the first of which Umar recited Surah Sa'ad 38 and in the second which he recited Surah Al-Isra 17, 
containing reference to the Isra and Miraj. Several earthquakes throughout the centuries severely damaged the mosque, necessitating complete renovations. The construction of the current building was done by the Umayyad Caliphs Malik bin Marwan and his son Walid bin Abdul Malik. When the Crusaders occupied Masjid al-Aqsa, they converted this building as their headquarters. It was renovated again by Salah al-Din Ayyubi after he reconquered Jerusalem and retreated to its former state. There is great virtue praying in the Masjid al-Aqsa. Abu Darada relates that the Prophet وسلم, said, A prayer in Mecca is worth 100,000 times, a prayer in my masjid, Medina, is worth 1,000 times, and a prayer in Al-Aqsa is worth 500 times more than anywhere else. <laughs> take them with me in my hands <laughs> um, but yeah there's just another place like underground under this mosque right here it's still part of the mosque and it's really nice and most people I don't know if they just don't know about it but <laughs> it's always empty so I'm gonna show it to you guys maybe it's closed oh no it's closed okay I'm gonna be back another time like I'm gonna do this video in two days because you know it's big and I don't have time to finish it now. I just thought of it. So, yeah, I'm gonna come back inshallah and I'll show you next time I come if it's open. But it should be right here usually. And it's just like the same thing. Oh my gosh, there's a cat. I'm gonna have to go see the cat. Look at this. So, today is open, alhamdulillah. So, we can actually go in and see what it's like. This is the area beneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque. So it's called both the basement of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the old Al-Aqsa Mosque. Right down the hallway, you can see a library containing around 130,000 books. There are also some 4,000 manuscripts, which were donated from the private collections of Jerusalem families. UNESCO says that the library contains one of the most important collections of Islamic manuscripts. Unfortunately, before I can show you around some more, the man inside told us that we had to turn around and get out because the mosque was closing. A little bit to the left, however, there was a grail in the basement floor through which you can see the floor below where the oil was burnt to heat the mosque. I'm excited that we made it just in time because they're already closing right now. So I was literally just able to go in and then I had to go right back out. But at least I was able to show you because last time it was closed. Okay, so now that we came out of this place, on the other side is the Dome of the Rock and we're gonna go see that. There's always a lot of people, as you can see, just chilling here. Um, I'm gonna show you this right here is where the men can do wudu or ablutions. Um, I don't know if it's 
No, I don't think it's closed. I just think it's not prior time, so no one's taking it. And there's kids playing soccer outside. <laughs> um, but yeah, this right here is where men can do the ablutions. There's like water here and chairs here for them to sit and do it comfortably. And here is another station, I believe, <laughs> for ablutions. Um, actually, this might just be like, like water to drink. Yeah. Um, or to wash your hands because people just fill up their water in here um, it's not really convenient to do ablutions right here now we are about to walk up through one of the eight arches that lead up to the dome of the rock since the dome of the rock is octagonal shape meaning it has eight sides there are eight different arches that lead up to it these right here are the southern arches and they cut between the al qibli mosque and the dome of the rock the Dome of the Rock, or Qubat al-Sakhra in Arabic, was built by Caliph Abd al-Malik from 685 to 692 CE and houses the sacred rock from which it is said Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ascended to heaven after the night journey to Jerusalem. It is an octagon-shaped building and four of the sides have doors. This elaborate structure right here is called the Summer Pulpit or in Arabic, Minbar Burhan al-Din. It stands immediately adjacent to the southern colonnade of the Dome of the Rock Terrace. The pulpit was fully built between 1345 and 1388, and it was named after the chief of the judges, Burhan al-Din bin Jama. The pulpit was renovated in the Ottoman period by Prince Muhammad Rashid in 1843 AD in the time of Sultan Abdul Majid. Moreover, the Ottoman logo, Crescendent Star, on both sides of the pulpit was added. Before the building of the pulpit, it was originally a dome called the Dome of the Scale. Then the pulpit was introduced in the Ubayid area, with a staircase consisting of 13 steps. Ayid khutbah was performed here, and addresses were also made from here on other special occasions. Right next door is the Dome of Yusuf ibn Ayyub. This dome structure was built in 1191 CE by the ruler Yusuf ibn Ayyub, more famously known as Salahuddin Ayyubi. It was renovated in 1681 CE during the reign of the Ottoman Sultan Mehmet IV. Its name was attributed to its founder Yusuf bin Ayyub. In a later stage, it was attributed to its renovator of the Ottoman government, Ali ibn Yusuf Agha. Another opinion is that it was built to commemorate the Prophet Yusuf alayhi wasallam. The dome structure is open from all sides except for the southern side which is sealed by a wall. It is built on two stone columns and contains two inscriptions. When the Dome of the Rock was first built, the outside was covered in mosaics. The beautiful external tile work, which can be seen today, was commissioned by Suleiman II Kanuni, the lawgiver, known throughout Europe as Suleiman the Magnificent. The inscription surrounding the top is Surah Yasin, regarded as the heart of the Qur'an. This was commissioned by Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Through the arches, you can see the Sabil Kid Bay, which is a public fountain originally built by Sultan Sayyid Fidin and Al in 1456 CE. As only a well had remained of its original structure, the Mamluk Sultan Kid Bay reconstructed it and added a colorful brick and marbled flooring building, topped with an octagonal dome ornamented with Islamic motifs. The small bluish dome to the right, right next to the Dome of the Rock, is referred to as the Dome of the Prophet. It is commonly believed to mark the spot from where the Prophet وسلم, led all the Prophets in prayer during the night of Isra and Miraj. This beautiful building right here is called the Dome of the Ascension or in Arabic Qubat al-Miraj and it was built by the Umayyads and actually renovated in 1200 AD. It stands just north of the Dome of the Rock and commemorates the Prophet Muhammad's وسلم, ascension to heaven and according to Islamic tradition, it's said that Burak, his horse, was tied right here before his journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
This dome is called the Dome of Sheikh Al Khalili. It was established in the Ottoman era in 1700 AD. It was named after the Sufi Sheikh Muhammad Al Khalili, who used to lead the prayer as an Imam and worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in it. Today, it is the office of the Restoration Committee. This dome right here is called Dome of Al Khidr and it is a small hexagonal dome built in the 16th century CE on the far northern west corner of the Dome of the Rock Plateau. This structure marks a spot where some Muslims believe a righteous man, Al Khidr, used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is mentioned in verse 65 to 82 of chapter 18 or Surat Al Kaf of the Quran. However, it should be noted that there are no authentic sources to back this above claim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The dome is based on six marble columns and includes a niche built with some red stones inside. This next structure is called the Dome of the Spirits or some people know it as the Dome of the Tablets. In Arabic it's called Qubat al-Arwah. It's a small dome resting on an octagonal base and it's located right next to the Dome of the Rock. Several theories exist concerning the name of this building and it could be associated with the proximity of the Cave of the Spirits which I will show you in a bit which is located inside the Dome of the Rock. And according to this legend, the souls of the dead will be gathered there for prayer. This is one of 15 khilwat or retreat chambers that were built around the platform for notable Muslims over the years and they were used for worshipping, reading Quran and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These were also referred to as solitude places and this one in particular is called Qatas Bay Solitude Place and it was built in 1560 AD. This building right here is the Department of Islamic Endowments in Jerusalem, which is affiliated to the Al-Aqsa Mosque Directorate of the Jordanian Ministry of Endowments, Affairs and Islamic Sanctuaries. It is concerned with the affairs of the Blessed Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Islamic Endowments in Al-Quds al-Sharif. Um, and this is another gate. And before I actually mistakenly went down there thinking that the Al-Qudli Mosque was there, but they, I was fooled. It's just like another gate. Um, okay, so let's see what this sign says here. This sign says Al Baraka Al Shamliya Northern Arcade from the Mamluk period from 721H and 1321 AD. So that's really old. And there's people like laughing at me, Loki. <laughs> but you know what? Do it for the content, do it for you guys. Because I've had so many people tell me they want to see what's up. They want to see a full tour. So I am providing a full tour, no matter how much humiliation I'm getting out of it. Because yes, it's kind of humiliating. Um, anyways, down here is just a bunch of trees. It's super beautiful. And there's trees everywhere, which I love because there's a lot of like shaded areas to sit. And this building right here is another solitude place that I discussed before and this one in particular is called the Western Ahmad Basha Solitude Place. It was built in 1601 by Ahmad Basha al Radwan. And another gate once again because you know. <laughs> and there's another cat! Okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture of this cat. Damn it, he ran away. I want to take a cool picture, you know, like where the cat is here and then like with the view of the dome. That would be really, a really nice picture. But the cat is not cooperative, so I can't do it. Um, there's another sign and you know we love signs. This sign right here says, Eric. okay, it's the same thing. <laughs> same sign. Was I here before? Am I going crazy? No, I wasn't. It's just the same sign. And here are some more trees. 
This right here is actually one of five ancient and modern wells that are situated on the Dome of the Rock platform. And although today the Haram al-Sharif gets its water from the city's water supply, in the past the large consumption of water in the Al-Aqsa compound required a continuous and sufficient water supply and this was the reason for the many wells which functioned as water reserves. Now we are approaching yet another solitude place. This one in particular is called the Ahmadiyya Madrasud Solitude Building and it was built in 1807. It was built at the beginning of the Ottoman period and today it is used for the purposes of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. From this angle right here, you get a pretty good look at all the arches. I think I counted six from this angle and then there are two more hiding behind the dome. Besides the Dome of the Rock, this is probably one of my favorite domes. It's called the Dome of the Chain and it's located adjacently east of the Dome of the Rock. It is one of many small buildings that can be found scattered around the Temple Mount and its exact historical use and significance are under debate. It was erected in 691 to 692 CE and it is one of the oldest surviving structures on the Temple Mount. It was built by the Umayyads and became a Christian chapel under the Crusaders and was restored as an Islamic prayer house by the Ayyubids and has been renovated by the Mamluks, Ottomans and Jordanian base wall. According to Islamic sources, this was King David's and Solomon's place of judgment and according to Islamic tradition, this will be the place where in the end of days the last judgment will take place with a chain allowing passage only to the just and stopping all the sinful. This completes a full round of the compound, so I am back to where I started. As you can see, we are at the place that we started right there. I forgot what it's called, I'm sorry. The pulpit, it's called the pulpit, um, back at the pulpit. Um, so I actually did go inside the Dome of the Rock, but it's going to be a super long video, so I decided that I'll make that into another video, inshallah. So yeah, check that one out. Um, for now, I'm just gonna leave the dome of the rock compound, basically. <laughs> I'm gonna leave through one of the arches that leads me to the right gate, so just follow me and see. So yeah, the gate where I exit, and if you're ever coming to here to visit and you want to like get to the right gate that brings you to uh, Damascus Gate or Bab al Amud, then take the one that's next to the cop station. See the cop station is right here. Take the gate right next to it. Um, not this one. Not the one that's like right beside it, but like this one. No. <laughs> Just a pro tip for me who got lost a hundred million times. The next few places I will show you are called corners. These corners were built as places for worshipping, whether that be praying or studying Qur'an and Hadith. This specific corner right here is called the Al-Khadr corner and was built by the Umayyads. In 1099 AD, the supervisor, Ibn Marji, stated that it was next to the Western Shrine. Al-Khadr corner in the Mamluk period was largely neglected and used as a storehouse for the tools and crops of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Today, its location is used as a workshop for the restoration of marble and mosque paintings. This small building over here is called the Shalan Spring. It was built in the Ayyubid period in 1216 AD, and it was renewed in the Mamluk period in 1429 and also during the Ottoman period.
here is another terrace and it's called the El Budaidi Spring Terrace and it's from the Ottoman era. The terrace gets its name due to the close proximity to the Sabil al Sheikh Budair or the fountain of Mustafa Agha. It was built by Mustafa Agha and Uthman Bakr al Fakadi in 1740 CE. It is a freestanding fountain on the Haram al Sharif with arches on three sides and closed wall on the fourth. The Sabil was built by Mustafa, the governor of Jerusalem, in 1740 to 1741 CE. He ruled Jerusalem for 20 years. This is the last structure I will be showing you guys and this is a terrace once again. It's called the Ala al Din al Basayri Terrace and it was built in 1397 AD. Okay, so this is the end of my tour, my unguided tour. Um, We've seen everything, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now I'm just gonna finally leave the entire compound, and I'm gonna leave through the Bab al Majlis, which is the door that will bring me easiest to um, Bab al Amud, which is Damascus Gate, which is where everything started. <laughs> so, this is Bab al Majlis, this is where I came in, and this is also where I will leave because I don't want to be lost. So this right here, once you leave the entire section, you come to the souk, which is the market. Um, if you did hear, uh, it was the soldiers like uh -uh -uh me because they don't like being filmed, but I didn't even film them. I just filmed, filmed the place. And look at these cats. But yeah, this is the end of my video. So thank you so much for joining. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah.